because I had dyslexia, that I'm stupid. I can act stupid, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> Their pieces were like really articulate and bright and clever and interesting or funny or witty, whatever. Whereas I always felt like mine was never as funny or clever or as theirs. But that time I've never forgot. I've never been more embarrassed to have dyslexia than that one read through. My name's Nancy. I'm 21 and I'm a performer with dyslexia. Dyslexia is a processing difference, often affecting reading, writing and spelling. It can also have an impact on things such as memory, speed of processing, time management and coordination. Mum and Dad thought that I had it during primary school but it wasn't picked up on. They think that the school let me down. If we ever to do reading out loud in a class situation I'd always be so stressed. Free writing on the spot I didn't really like either. I find it harder to distinguish lefts and rights. They were all signs of dyslexia. When I went to high school in about year seven, it was picked up straight away. It is believed that around 10% of the UK population are dyslexic. Signs of dyslexia usually become more apparent when a child starts school, where they begin learning to read and write. However, statistics show that only 29% of dyslexic individuals get officially diagnosed before their 17th birthday. Many only receive a diagnosis later in life. Some dyslexic performers experience a sense of dislocation when reading and processing text. I don't read it how it's written in the sense of like the flow of the sentences. This experience means they can feel alienated from the world of verbal and written language, frequently reporting problems with remembering lines. I could read a whole page and I wouldn't know what I've just read. Actors find themselves reading, analysing and learning text almost daily. We spoke to Nancy about her experiences as an actress and she shared some of her struggles of being dyslexic in this industry. I'd say in terms of like read-throughs at the start of a process, I dread with a passion. Just because you don't know what you're going to be met with, if you're going to be met with like, oh no, that's fine, or at first it's forgiving, and then you're like, oh my god, yeah, okay, Nancy's reading now. I think th there was one time when I was doing a read-through at my theatre group, and I got word wrong, and I can't remember what I said, but they, oh, just, oh, it's the worst. Do you know when you just want the ground to swallow? It was just the worst. Um, it wasn't like, I just was struggling anyway and I couldn't believe that they couldn't see me going red. <laughs> I was just like, stop, I'm really panicking anyway. And I think it definitely triggers my anxiety sometimes. Um, but that time I've never forgot. I've never been more embarrassed to have dyslexia than that one read through, I think that's what's triggered read throughs being bad. But I think it was more the people that day. I think I just thought, oh, yeah. Sixty-nine percent of dyslexic actors feel their dyslexia affects their self-esteem. As part of a recent survey, the participants reflected on how they felt their dyslexia affected their mental well-being. One actor expressed feeling a lack of confidence in their ability. Another felt their dyslexia meant they were untalented or unable to do the work everyone else was able to do. Finally, making them feel anxious going into the industry. It can trigger anxiety if I'm getting stressed about lefts and rights, not picking up or a lot of information from a teacher, especially if they... Um, verbalise direction or instruction without showing it. With enough support, dyslexic performers can be independent learners with a positive identity.
simultaneously to our research, we spent time with Nancy, working together and discussing her dyslexia in day-to-day life. Ian McEwan on the Chessels Beach, never read it. Sally Rooney, read half of it. Uh, read one play in this one. Oh, this is called A Problem Like Maria. Ah! Oh. Nancy explained that not only does dyslexia affect her education, but also the more practical aspects of her life. I'm a terrible driver, but also the roundabout situation freaks me out. I don't know what lane to go in. I stress out my left and right. Um, I just have to pray that I'm in the right lane or don't cut anyone up because I'm there with... <laughs> Since moving away from home at 18, Nancy has grown in independence and continued to learn about her dyslexia. We set out to learn more about the theory behind Nancy's learning, and using the VARC learning model, we discovered that Nancy is a multimodal learner, meaning her success rates are higher when she uses a range of learning styles. The three most dominant styles for Nancy are kinesthetic, which means physical learning, oral, which is speaking, and visual, which is seeing. I think that's why I liked my history teacher, Miss Paul. She was so visual like I had games, like history games, and I just loved it. I loved her lessons. She was like a performer. Her lessons were like a show. After assessing Nancy's preferred learning styles, we set up three separate workshops to experiment with new strategies for learning a script. For workshop one, we organised a control workshop. We gave Nancy 30 minutes in a controlled environment to learn a short monologue using the strategy she currently uses to learn lines. Nancy's strategy uses the learning styles of reading and writing and oral. She uses a repetitive process of writing out a line, covering it and saying it out loud, only moving on when she can successfully recall the line. Of the 30 minutes allowed, Nancy was ready to perform the script after 15 minutes. We gave Nancy two attempts at the script, so she could have the chance to rectify any mistakes in the first read. Oh no, I did it wrong, I missed a bit. In the second attempt, she managed to recall the majority of the script as it was written. We then asked Nancy to review her strategy based on this exercise. I do think it's a kind of slow process, because if I was to get a script and I was like, had a lot of lines, it's kind of slow. but. I find it the best way to learn the lines and kind of see the character in my head without like jumping to conclusions because it kind of like you can see the words and how they're written like progressively. Moving on to workshop two, we created a visual strategy of learning a script. We used images that linked to the lines in the script and printed them out to lay across like a storyboard. Nancy was then able to use the pictures to plant the images in her mind's eye and link the image to the correct words. Of the 30 minutes we gave Nancy to complete this process, she only used five and a half minutes to learn the script. As before, we gave Nancy two attempts. The main content of the script was correctly remembered in both reads, with only a few conjunction words being a problem. We asked Nancy to share her thoughts on this line learning strategy. I liked that one. In a lineup like this, it's easier to see an order than down a page. I think looking at it like you can see the stages of it. So like in my head I can see like da, 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 da. whereas I think going down and just words, I think it can all just kind of blur into one. And also key moments in the dialogue and changes of rhythm and changes of thought. So also quicker in figuring out the character's journey. However, I've got to be bothered to do it like this, like to learn it, get photos and break down the whole script. So it's kind of a long process, but I did like it. Finally, in workshop three, we used a kinesthetic strategy to aid the line learning process, this time in a duologue. We asked Nancy to create movements and gestures that linked with her lines. The theory behind this is that muscle memory will allow her body to know what movement comes next, and then by connecting the movement to the words, she retains her lines and can successfully recall the script. We gave Nancy artistic freedom to create her own movements, as this meant the actions were a true representation of how she perceives that word or line. Of the 30 minutes given, 
Nancy only used 10 minutes to create and learn, and as usual, she had two attempts. The first attempt, Nancy performed the script using the actions she had created. This was successful, so for the second attempt, we asked Nancy to remove the actions physically and only speak the lines. This was also successful, which Nancy later reflected on. Um, I've never learned um, um, a script like that before. Um, and it feels really weird when you're doing it, but actually it's a really quick way of doing uh, lines and like speaking them out loud. I thought it really worked and I'd probably use that again. At first it felt weird because you're like used to like over the top, uh, doing it over the top, but once they were taken away you kind of actually found that the words were in your body more. And the more ridiculous sometimes it actually the easier like I thought so and like drink ke and cake like I remember them straight away so I think yeah really good especially to learn on my own as well that was really helpful this is the best one I'd do this one again definitely yeah after three successful workshops we asked Nancy what she'd learned from the process I have learned that there's so many different ways to approach learning and text and not being stuck in one way that you've learned just because it kind of works. Each individual is different and while there are some barriers generated by dyslexia, with the right understanding and support, dyslexic actors can thrive in the industry. My advice would be don't stress out, don't let it panic you. So I think actually letting people know maybe takes off that pressure that you're like trying to be like everyone else where it's actually okay to be a bit behind but you'll get there eventually. As Nancy comes to the end of her years in formal education, she expressed her appreciation for being able to reflect on her journey. I feel like touched in a way by it because no, I've never really even like thought about dyslexia as like, a, it's, you can't just get on with it. So I feel like the fact that I've had time in my life to like look at it and um, and look at it in different ways and like the breakdowns of it and how it's actually made me feel when I was little to like 21, like I've never really reflected upon it. So it's been quite nice and like to see like maybe how far I've come personally with it or um, how I've coped with it in different situations. Whereas now I've got like different techniques, so that's nice. I'm dyslexic. And that's okay.